There's the record button. Rick, I'll grab those email addresses for you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, so we are now recording. So I'll start over. Welcome to uh, Giving Exams in Blackboard. I'm Rick Dowling. I'm the coordinator of faculty development here at the Center for Instructional Technology. And uh, so our objective here today is to uh, talk about creating exams in Blackboard. Um, and really, this is uh, the content of this workshop is really aimed at folks who are um, new to giving tests in Blackboard. Uh, in my experience, I've taught as an adjunct for uh, many years. Um, I've used Blackboard for my testing, and I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, so, uh, for those of you who might be a little new, we'll uh, just take a look at what this, ex what this experience looks like. So, um, I will now share my screen. I've got a brief PowerPoint, and hopefully you're seeing my screen at this point. There we go. Uh, as I, I got a couple of slides that are pretty standard for all of my workshops, but uh, our website is the... Um, at the Center for Instructional Technology, cit.ua.edu. We have this, uh, we have just a wealth of information about all the technologies that we support on campus here, uh, many of which uh, will hopefully assist you in your transition to making your courses or taking your courses online. Um, this is, um, a list of the technologies that we support. Most folks know us for Blackboard. That is the um, that is the thing that we support that touches the most people. Um, of course, we also support Box and uh, Zoom, Turnitin, which is plagiarism detection, uh, Turning Point, which is the student response system, or Clickers, we call them. Um, People.ua.edu is the professional uh, website uh, service that we provide for faculty at the university. Uh, Blackboard Collaborate, which is a conferencing tool, which is very similar to Zoom, uh, but exists within Blackboard. It is a Blackboard product. And this uh, green icon that appears to be a ribbon is um, Panopto, which is lecture capture um, software that uh, can be used to record presentations and thus share with your students. So, um, here's what we're going to talk about today. It's a pretty simple agenda. Um, we're going to look into a course. We're going to take a test. We're going to create a test. We're going to deploy a test. And then we're going to take a look at the test options and availability exceptions within Blackboard. So uh, that is our hopefully achievable agenda today. Oh, and there's our contact info, cit.ua.edu. So now I'm going to... Stop my share. Sorry, I've got my screens arranged in a strange manner for myself. And do, 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 I'll stop the share there. Okay, so done with PowerPoint. And this, you know, I mentioned a bit about practicing in Zoom. This is one of those things, just juggling the different, uh, the tasks you have to do. Um, so I, have probably been logged out of Blackboard. So let's just, uh, I will share with you now my screen again, except this time I will share my Firefox browser. And I'm using Firefox uh, as my browser today. Um, I'm just going to log into Blackboard. uaLearn.blackboard.com is the uh, direct URL for Blackboard. Now we can see if I can successfully regenerate my 12 character password. Well, can we get there using my Bama? Yes, you can also uh, access um, Blackboard through my Bama. So right, the Blackboard that I've been using has to do with grading and has to do with my slides and everything else, but. I didn't see any way of making a test from there. Okay, well, good you news. Here we are. Um, okay. So uh, I've just logged into Blackboard, and uh, okay. by default, when you log into Blackboard, whether it's through MyBama or going to the direct URL, as I did, um, you are taken to the My Institution page. I have uh, 
And honestly, the thing that I care most about um, the My Institution page here is this center channel. Uh, and, and on my display, it's a center channel. You can rearrange this window, but uh, this My Courses listing here um, is really all I care about in this window. Uh, the course we're going to be using today is what we uh, at the Center for Instructional Technology call a practice course. So I have this uh, 2020 Dowling practice course. Um, so we're go going to go into this course, which I have uh, used off and on for many of my other webinars. Um, this is a good time to put in a plug for my colleagues at CIT. We are more than happy to create practice courses for you um, if you would like that. So if you would like a Blackboard course that is only for you and has no students in it, uh, that is what practice courses are for. Um, I've got a bunch because I use them in uh, workshops and things like that, but that is the purpose of a practice course. It is, it exists in Blackboard, it has no students assigned to it, and it exists just so I can practice with, um, with what's going on in Blackboard. So <clears throat> that is uh, a little bit of info about my practice course here, but this particular course, again, I've used for a while, I've added some things. Um, just a quick little tour on the uh, the left here where it says you'll see Dowling 2020 Dowling practice. That's the course name. Typically for actual courses, real live courses, it will have um, a, a series of letters and numbers corresponding to the semester and the topic area and that sort of thing. Uh, but as we scroll down the course menu, um, we see the different uh, content areas and tools that I've added here. Um, and underneath this menu, there's the course management menu that we as instructors see, but our students do not see. So I just wanted to point that out at, uh, from the beginning. Um, I have added a content area called exams in my, in my course. So if I'll click the content area, and I have uh, created a webinar practice test. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna start out with just, uh, I'm going to go to student view, which um, will allow me to see my course as my students see it. And then um, we will actually go through and take this exam as a student. So I'm going to click the go to student view button right here. It's one of my favorite tools in all of Blackboard. Uh, so we go to student view, and now we see my course as my students, were there any students in here? I think Aaron's a student in this course. Um, were there any students here? This is what they would see. So again, they see the same thing that I see in terms of the course menu, but they don't get a course management menu. That's left up to me as the instructor. So I will navigate back to my exams content area, and I see, hey, there's webinar practice test number one. Um, so let's just march through this. And Are you gonna go over how to actually create that test at some yes. point? Yes, yes. That is true, I just wanted you to have the experience. Okay. okay, so I click on the link and I see there's webinar practice test one. Um, I've given us a time limit of one hour for this. Um, so, and we'll see how that uh, manifests itself once we start. Um, I've set this exam up for multiple attempts, um, which is probably something you won't do, but this is just uh, allows me to take the test over and over again. Um, so this is, again, I'm seeing this as a student right now. I'm interacting with my course as the demo student in Blackboard. So when I begin, I see, uh, we're taking the test. I get some test information across the top, the description, instructions, choose the best answer. Um, lets me know that there's a time limit for this test. Um, and I also see a countdown timer across the uh, top of the screen. I like that. That's a nice uh, element of pressure for it. Uh, and so this first question, uh, I, I like this question. It's kind of an attempt at humor, but uh, this question type is called a hotspot question. So the question is an image. In this case, it's a picture of this little koala bear, and the correct answer is an area 
within the photograph. And we're going to set up one of these and I'll show you how that's done. But uh, of course, you know, here's the comedy, right? Pick the nose. <laughs> big with the kids. So uh, the idea is that I'm asking my students to indicate where the nose on the koala bear is, right? So when I click, I see a little marker there. Hopefully you guys can see that, that little X. It's right in the middle of the little guy's nose. Um, and then um, that's, that's my answer. So I've, I've just completed that question. So, and I see up here that it's worth 10 points and that now my answer has been saved and I can move on via these little arrows to go to question number two. And again, it reloads. I've set my test up to show me one question at a time. Uh, and question number two, this is the true false question. Uh, my cat asked me to do this. It's uh, cats are better than dogs. So uh, don't hate me for this. This is where I usually lose half the room. I've lost Aaron already, but uh, my cat made me put this in here and I've chosen my answer is true. So I can save my answer. The answer has been saved and now I'm ready to move on to question number three. He's a good kitty though. Just FYI. He's a good everyone. kitty. He's around here. He might make an appearance. Um, and then staying with the cat theme, this is a multiple choice question. Uh, which of the following is not a cat? So, um, and my choices are A, Bulldog, B, Siamese, C, Persian, or D, Tabby. Um, and I see that Bulldog is not a type of cat. So I save my answer. Uh, I'm now done with this test. It's not a hard test. I gave myself an hour, lots of, lots of time for this. Um, but I will save and submit. I get a test submission confirmation. I can go back to the test if I want to, but I'm going to click OK to submit my assessment. And I get a notice as I scroll down, but I get a notice that my test was saved and submitted. Um, and this is the duration. I use two minutes out of an hour. And if I click OK, I see my responses. And again, I set it up this way. We'll take a look at how this exam was set up. Um, so there's my response for that question number one. There's question number two with my answer. And there's question number three. Now this is a, um, the having Blackboard display the responses for me is an option that I set up. Uh, when I was creating the exam or the exam settings. So I will click OK. And that's it. I've just taken a test. Uh, that's how your students would engage with an exam. Well, how so, do they engage with you while they're taking the exam? Oh, they don't. What if you need them to? What if they want to know, is a meerkat a cat? I mean, if they have questions about the test, how do they, is there no way of having an an interface like with Zoom? Not uh, that is currently built into the Blackboard um, testing experience. So it's not a perfect substitution, but. Um, hey, um, Rick, can yep. you give them instant feedback? Like if they got five answers right or four answers right? Yeah, yeah, we'll take a look at the setup here in just a moment. Uh, I'll return now to a teacher view. And so now I'm taken back to the instructor view of my Blackboard course. So let's go through and let's, let's just create uh, a new exam within Blackboard. So I'll navigate over to my exams content area. So here we are now in the exams content area and I create an assessment by uh, hovering over assessments. These are buttons, by the way. They don't look terribly much like buttons, but they are buttons. Um, so I want to create a new test within Blackboard. And at this window, I'm given the option of creating a new test or using an existing test. Uh, so in this case, I want to create a new test. So um, we will choose Can create. you import a test that you've already written? Yes, um, there is, uh, depending on, I will say yes with a variable. So if you have your test bank um, created oh, in- I mean a test that requires a lot of calculations and essays. Um, Aaron, help me out here. You're muted, Aaron. Right, how many, <laughs> how many is a lot? 
um, well, let's say that there's 20 questions and each question requires one page of calculations or half a page of uh, essay response? Um, so I, you can use essay responses for that. Um, if you feel like, if you need it to grade itself, I don't think that's a good option. No, I would grade the test. Okay, okay. so there, are, yeah, there are essay question yeah. types yeah, that we're you gonna, can use. And we're gonna take to a look at the second. different um, question types. Okay. And then we also have a question from the chat that says, when you create an exam, can you please do a sample math question where the they can type in for partial credit? Okay. Um, partial credit, I would say, if you really wanna do the math type questions, ask me for a practice, I mean, ask me, well, I mean, you can ask me, but um, email CIT at ua.edu and ask for a practice course, because honestly, I have no idea what, what a math question would entail for you guys. Um, I came from humanities and even if I tried, it would not turn out the way you want it to turn out. Um, I would say play with those math questions before you just go straight into it, like so excited about it working automatically for you. So the, the constraint is that they have to type things in rather than write it with a pen? Is that the I, that's the constraint, yes, for that part. Um, there are some calculation question types, which he, again, will show you in just a second. But um, since you're looking for like half a page to a page of stuff, then it, that's definitely a constraint. Um, oh. With that in mind, um, I've told some people before, and I think this is a good thing to know, you may have to adapt your test giving and your test questions to an online environment. Meaning but how do we know what the constraints are? Like if we, you give them a problem to solve, is it the number of lines of typing that they have to do or? So like I said, you'll have to test it out for yourself. I don't think there's a constraint in how many number of lines that you're gonna do. For yours, an essay question is the best because you want a lot of stuff. But for the actual calculation test questions, I think, anyone who's in some kind of field where you do numbers all the time, you need to test those question types out yourself so that you know how they work and you know what to expect from your students and what your students can expect from the test because it's not gonna be like the regular test giving and test taking. And again, um, like I was saying, you might need to adapt your test to an online environment, meaning you need to, you need to like manage expectations for yourself and for your students just so that they know it's okay. You're, everybody needs to be comfortable is what I'm saying. So how do I get this practice test that I email you and tell you I want one? A practice um, course, yes. Practice, so to get a practice course, to play around with all of this stuff, like we said at the beginning, just so people know that are coming in, put your email address in the chat, um, just yeah. for the slides also, but put your email address in the chat. And um, if you want a practice course, email CIT at ua.edu and I'll get it for you after this webinar. But just, just save questions for that stuff af until after he goes over all the test types okay. and question types. Cool. Okay, so um, just we are now creating a test. We have chosen to create a new test. Um, and the, the input boxes here in Blackboard are more or less standard, but whenever you see this little orange asterisk, it indicates that you have to enter uh, content for that particular box. So I'm just going to call this uh, test two, very creative name. Um, and in this box, I can add a description to my test if I, if I desire, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I can add instructions and I usually go with something like choose the best answer. Rick, is that description just that you can see or are students seeing that? Oh, uh, the students can see that as well. So, if, um, you know, the biggest test of your life. <laughs> so, again, let's manage some expectations. I'm just kidding. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like to ramp up that pressure. Don't forget you're supposed to be managing some super big expectations. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Well, it's the biggest test of your life right here. So, uh, I mean, I, I believe that, but. So, I'm, so, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a test. So, I, I've just created a test, and now I get to populate the test with questions. 
And so now we're in the test canvas window. So uh, I've got some, again, buttons across the top. Um, under create questions, it's the next step in what we're going to do. Um, but I, 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 you know, I've never counted how many question types there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 17. So there's 17 different question types that we can choose from uh, all the way from calculated formula. And I confess to not having much experience with the uh, math centric uh, question types. Uh, so that might require some experimentation. Um, so Rick, can I just ask, uh, I have a, you know, on that, I have a follow up question because I have the same issue as Doug. Uh, you know, so I, see, so my exams, uh, so they, you know, they will have some multiple choice, but mostly short answer. Now, short answer, they are quant quantitative uh, problems. So, but you see, I uh, I don't see what uh, like they can just type it in in the if I set it up as a short answer question, mm -hmm. then won't they be able to just type it in? Yes. Yes. There is a. There is uh, specifically. There is a short answer question type. There is also an essay question type. Yeah. 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 Um, so those are, again, two question types uh, one can choose from. Let's just go with an essay question. Let's just take a look at that. Um, so, essay, um, and as you create questions, again, these the the boxes are going to be more or less standard. You can title your question if you like it's not required but the question text is required so here is where you could um so i'll just say you know describe the economy i can't spell i'm a nervous typer describe the economy um and so there is our question text um we don't have to uh, provide an answer here. If you are a user of rubrics, you could add a rubric here or use an existing rubric. Uh, you can apply categories, topics, levels of difficulty, and keywords or keywords or none of the above to the question, the specific question that we've just created. Um, you can add notes, instructor notes, which are visible only to you, not to the student. Uh, and then once we have created this, this is a very basic question, mind you, uh, we'll click submit. So our essay is describe the economy. Um, and we'll, we'll, take, we'll go through and take this exam just to see what that question type looks like. Um, hey, Rick, about the rubric. So yes. if, that, if the question is to um, describe the economy, would you create like two or three um, elements that you would look for in their answer? Like, did they give uh, the name of a politician? They use a number, or they use a recent event. I'm just curious how you would activate the rubric element there. Uh, well, you would, you could, um, again, as you mentioned, yes, you could create um, a rubric based upon what you're expecting from the student in response to this thing. Uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't use essay questions when I was teaching, but uh, just for everybody else listening, I taught a, a multimedia production course. So uh, I did use rubrics for grading projects. Uh, I didn't use them so much for grading exam questions, uh, but it, it, it's exactly that. It's just a score sheet that you can create and then refer to as you're grading the responses. So they, I'm a big, they see that when they answer the question, right? No. They can't, uh, they don't see the rubric, Aaron, is that correct? They don't see the rubric. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I know they do for projects, but I've never, uh, never used a rubric for uh, exams. So let's, let's just march on through a little bit and let's take a look at um, some different question types. So um, the uh, true false is the most basic. So we'll choose a true false question. Again, question title, that's up to us. Um, and then we type some question text. Um, it is raining. We can choose the how the answers are oriented vertically or horizontally. I, I like vertical. Uh, you get to choose the correct answer here. So we'll choose false for that. Um, and you can provide feedback on um, 
true, false, and multiple choice questions, probably some other question types as well. Um, and, and honestly, the, the thing I love about true, false, and multiple choice questions is that Blackboard can grade those. Um, I mean, you could make a test that was nothing but a bunch of essay questions and then be in, more involved in the grading your, yourself for that. Uh, but there is, you could provide feedback if you wanted to show that to your students, correct response, incorrect response. Uh, again, you can add categories, uh, you can add notes for yourself, but once you've created it, you can click submit. So now our exam has two questions. Um, Let's go to you, please. Sorry, Rick. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Okay. Now we have uh, we require to send for our students uh, or to create a test with a question of yes or no, and it's not a question. It's to see if they got this email, our email or not, and if they have access to the internet or not. So the main point: I don't need to put yes or no. What should I do? So any answer is correct. What should I do in this case? Um, so you're going to deliver this test through Blackboard? Yeah, this is what they ask us to do. Send the um, students. I can read you what they, uh, what we ask it to. I don't think there is a yes, no question. Let me make sure of that. But uh, let uh, me. Here, here, I will let you. What uh, you do? Okay. Either uh, question type, Rick. Either or? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Do either or, and then it gives you an option if you scroll down mm -hmm. to do yes, no. no. Uh, okay, okay. I, I think she's referring to they've asked us to send a thing to all of our students yes, that it. say, can you, you know, uh, it's like... Uh, uh, like a technology kind of survey. Well, you know, uh, yeah. send one ping. They're asking them to ping oh, back. I see. I've got, right. uh, I've got two kids that haven't pinged back yet. Okay. It's just, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, do you all hear me? And and they pinged it back. So. Okay. Well, let's just try oh, this. That's fine. Do Thank you. you hear me? Okay. Um. And again, um, you By can choose Thursday, the orientation. We have to. We have to send the the boss how many of our kids have raised their hand that they commun are in communication with us. Okay. And so we'll leave that as yes, so no. We select the correct the, answer. You're doing it through a test instead of through like, is, is that supposed to be through like email or for, or does it matter? Or let through me, Zoom or something? Me, set up a blackboard assignment with two questions. I have the technology needed to participate fully. Yes or no? Okay. I need the following technology assistance to complete the coursework. So okay. I think we have two types here, either yeah. or, and the other one is, I'm not sure. I would is say short end? answer. Short okay. answer, okay, okay. And not to okay. muddy the waters here, but you could also create an assignment for that. You cut that out, Rick. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> let's just stick with the test. So we're just talking about tests. Um, okay, so. In this case, we're doing an either or question. Um, the question is, do you hear me? Which is kind of silly because they're not going to hear us in, in an exam. Um, how about instead of do you hear me, can you read this? Yeah. Can you read this? Uh, answer orientation. Answer choices are yes and no. The correct answer we've decided is yes. Uh, and again, there's the feedback options. I typically don't do that. Uh, and categories and keywords and instructor notes. So we can um, submit that. And by default, uh, by the way, this is a good time to bring this up. Each question is worth 10 points in uh, the exam that I'm setting up. We can change that. Notice that's a lighter blue color. I can click that and change the, uh, the value of this question, or I can make it extra credit if I wanted to. Um, and if I wanted to change the default value of each question, I can go here to question settings, which will open up a new window. Um, and I can specify the default point. So if I want my point value to be something other than 10, I can dial that in there and then click submit and change the uh, default value for each question. So I just wanted to make a note of that before I forgot. Um, 
let's add and we can change the number of points on the question directly by going to that screen or i mean uh, you that. can change it so uh, if you notice let's say we want my describe the economy question to be worth i don't know 50 points mm -hmm. so we can just click on that uh link right there and boom now it's worth 50 points okay and also can we we can randomize the questions right so that each yes is each yeah gets... you're ahead of me yes yeah, very good we're, we're going to get to that um yeah. so it will We've, uh, to keep in mind the process, you create a test, you add questions to the test, and then you deploy the test. And that's where we make, the deployment is where we make those decisions. Um, so, yeah, so just to clarify, so on my previous question and Doug's, uh, Doug's and my previous question, uh, you know, so like, uh, see, so quantitative, so my questions are all quantitative questions, problem solving. Uh, so, uh, see, so I could, uh, Put it and put it in as a short answer or essay question and they can just type in the responses so the only constraint is what the characters that appear on the keyboard which are supported by blackboard that right that is the that's the issue that's what erin was saying follow-up question to what to you it, is there a reason that you're using a test instead of an assignment ah uh, uh, well because it's a test but uh, you could have them submit see. something anyway. Sorry. I'm sorry? You could yes. still have them submit the same kind of things uh -huh. um, through an assignment and be able uh -huh. to annotate that better than you will be able to do that in a test. Oh, oh. I see. Nobody said that. That's correctly good to know. I see. So so we could uh, we could do the same thing. I mean, uh, for you could give them a file to download in an assignment that has your questions you want them to answer, and then they can re-upload that thing all filled out, and then you'll be able to annotate and give them comments on that assignment. I see. So and uh, okay. sorry, Rick. What, what type no, no. of file? What type of file? Like uh, uh, I, PDF, I don't think that, Word document. Yeah, I don't think uh, Word file. So I can upload in assignments. I could uh, put in the test through a, in a Word file, yep. and they, they can then type the responses in that Word file. And yep, then, then re-upload it to the assignment and submit it to you. Or, or could they write the responses and then copy that and pay and make it into a PDF and then submit it? If they have the technology to do that, sure. All they need is a computer. I mean, a printer. Not everybody has a printer. No, no. Or even At home. How about if they just typed it in Word and attached it as a Word sure. file? Yeah. yeah, and that would be a benefit of of using an assignment. Although with this essay question, you sh I believe you have the option of uploading a document, Aaron. I'm not sure you, about that. I think I'm, there's a file response. Um, you can probably attach oh, something, yeah. okay. but it's easier let's, to do the inline grading with an assignment. Yeah, let's make a file response question. It's okay. just, I think, I just feel like it might be more useful for you guys to use the assignment with how much you want them to put in there. Right. But that's not what Rick has just pulled up, though. Well, yeah, because Rick's doing exams and I'm talking about an assignment. Okay. Right. Two different animals. I see. And uh, I'm going to send you guys a link in the okay, chat. Thank you. So now we're doing a uh, file response question. So the question there is upload a file. Um, again, you could add a rubric or create a rubric. Um, categories and keywords, again, fairly standard. Instructor notes, uh, we'll submit that. And so now we have, uh, we've added four question types that um, our students can use and um, Oh, I see a chat. Aaron, are you keeping an eye on the it, chat? I'm sorry. I can't really me. see it when I'm, oh, that was you? I can't but really see George it when I'm. George also has a question. Can you explain the fillable PDF where they can fill in information? Uh, what? Uh, that might be if, a question. See if I can break the chat. Can you out. explain oh, the there it is. PDF okay, let me get PDF. chat over here I, where I can see it. Honestly, George, I would I would have to Google it. <laughs> oh. How yeah. wants you to upload a test bank? Um that might be a since you don't might not have we might not have one of those available just like out out of our pocket. Um if you want to send CIT at ua.edu an email, I'll explain that to you personally. 
Okay, Erin, I have one one more question before we go on. Uh, so, oh, yep. uh, so if we uh, if we set it up as an assignment, but then that will not have the capabilities to uh, random. It can that cannot probably randomize and things that like that. Is that is uh, true? It does not randomize. Not and, for us. Well, not for essay questions. Yes. No, for yeah, for an assignment, it's not going to randomize your stuff yes, for you. Yes, right. So, so there is an advantage to doing it in the in the exam because uh, I could randomize the question. For. Pardon me. It depends on what your goals for the this assessment are. You know, I mean, my uh, see. So uh, their answers would be so. So I have two types of questions. I have some multiple choice questions where the advantage of using uh, using exam is it can randomize and it can uh, grade them, uh, and uh, uh, and then the other is short answer. So, but answers are quantitative. These are all quantitative questions. So they can type in the answers in this, and if I do it through exam then it can randomize the questions, right? I and mean, that would... Yes. Why do you want to randomize, Anu? Because to prevent cheating. I don't think we can prevent cheating. They can be doing the test together. No, if you do the time test, see, if, you, if they have limited amount of time and the questions appear in random order, each one has a different, uh, see, then there just isn't enough time to help their friends. So even without using responders, uh, we uh, see this is uh, this is the uh, sort of low tech solution we came up with without uh, without learning uh, responders. Now, how easy is it to to lock the screen? I mean, um, that that's a separate. Uh, yeah, there's a thing called lockdown browser, uh, yeah. which is not directly related to creating the test in Blackboard. Yes. yes. Um, so. I'm creating a multiple choice question. So my question is choose the letter A. These, this is a really hard test. Don't get it wrong. Okay, I will. Uh, I can now for multiple choice questions. Again, I love these because Blackboard grades them. Uh, I've chosen letter numbering and you have many different choices, but I prefer lowercase letters uh, to be displayed vertically. Um, you can allow partial credit if you'd like. Uh, you can also have, this is one of those randomization things you were mentioning, uh, you can have the answers be displayed in random order. Mm -hmm. So um, in this case. How do you get partial credit with a multiple choice? Yeah, that's a good question. I never used that. Uh, allow does, negative scores for incorrect answers. If you scroll down to the answer things, Rick, it shows you you can give them partial credit percentages for each of the answers uh, okay. that are I not correct. Ah, okay. That's how you do that. Yeah, I don't like that. I want to turn that <laughs> off. I'm oh, gonna Rick, turn that off. About that. So, if you have four answers, mm -hmm. the correct answer is B. But if you randomize those, person two gets the same test. That answer may be response D. Yes. It'll figure out which is the correct one. Yeah, yes. you mark the correct answer. See as I've done here. So our question, so our question is choose the letter A. So answer number one is A, that's the correct answer. So answer number two is seven. Answer number three is three. And uh, answer four is P. So I've, I've designated the correct answer, thus allowing Blackboard to grade the, yeah. uh, the question. So, um, so can we randomize the questions too? Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. ahead of me, man. Yeah, I was just yeah. asking. If oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Rick, getting to that. Give them the information. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Uh, okay, so now we'll submit. And so now our uh, the most important test ever now has five questions. Um, it is worth uh, 90 points. Again, math is really not my thing. There we go. It's worth 90 points. Um, so let's go ahead. Now that we have created our exam, um, when I'm finished with that, I click OK, and I'm taken um, now back to the Create Test window. So I want to use Test 2, because this is the test I'm adding right now that I just created. This is the one I just made. So I click Submit. And so now I'm taken to the Test Options page. Um, there's the exam name. I can change the color that text displays in. Um, 
There's the content link description, the biggest test of your life. Um, <clears throat> I can choose whether or not to show the description to my students before they begin the test. Uh, and I can choose whether or not to show the instructions to my students before they begin the test. Um, I can choose whether or not to open the test in a new window. The default is set to no, which we encourage because we understand that if your students might be using some type of assistive technology, oftentimes opening new windows can confound that. Um, under test availability, I can choose to make the test available to students, which I want to do in this case you can create an announcement, a Blackboard announcement for the new test. You can allow or not multiple attempts. Um, this next one, um, we've had issues with, uh, okay, so force completion we have found is troublesome in that uh, this text beneath it here, once started, this test must be completed in one setting. Uh, we have found historically, and correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, that choosing force completion for this means that a student will be kicked out of the test if their internet connection lags for a nanosecond. Yep. Um, so it looks please, really good option. Oh, it really does. And we can't make this box go away. So I encourage you, please don't use force completion. Um, you can choose a timer as I did for the exam that we took earlier. So I set a timer, I can dial in how long I want my students to have to take this exam. Uh, and there is auto submit, which if it is on, the test will save and submit when the time expires. I typically like to turn that on. Um, I can set up this display after and a display until uh, will display the exam link in my content area. Um, if you choose to do that, that is uh, that is an option for you. You uh, can can you can you explain this auto submit? Yes. So auto submit if if it is on, um, it will save and submit automatically when the timer expires. So I dialed in that sixty minutes, uh, and so if I'm taking the exam and sixty minutes happens. Um, I see, I see. The timer runs out, it automatically submits for me. Okay. Uh, and if it's off, the user is given the option to continue. Are, and I'm assuming they're seeing the timer at the bottom of the screen as you're They're working. seeing it at the top. We'll ah. go through and take this exam in just a moment. And uh, yeah, you'll see the thing at the top. I like that because in the, the courses I was teaching, uh, certification exams all had a timer that was at the top of the screen. And it's a nice element of pressure. Um, <laughs> So uh, you can give, you can require a password for the test. And if you choose password, um, hmm, that's interesting. So Aaron, if I choose password, yeah. which I never did, I thought a, you had to indicate a password. You click in that box, right? That box just to the right. Oh, there we go. Sorry, that wasn't showing up on my display. Uh, so you can select a password uh, for that. That's not something I typically dealt with. Um, restrict location is useful if, uh, for instance, you're testing in a large lab. For instance, our colleagues in biology do that in the giant Lloyd lab, and you can dial in IP addresses to restrict locations. I do not think this is going to apply given our new state of uh, business here. Um, this next one for test availability exceptions is pretty cool. If you have someone who has a need for extended time on an exam, this is where you could set that up. So if I click this add user or group and it popped up open in another window. So let me drag this over here. Um, are y'all seeing the add user or group window? I, ha I have several ODS students in my classes. So uh, if you're seeing this add user or group we window. We don't see the pop-up. Oh, you don't? Dang. Okay. It's a pop-up. You'll have, it's, and we have a tutorial for this process. True. Um, hold on. Let me change my share then. I'm going to stop this share. Well, that's interesting. I would have thought that that would have shown up. Nope. Um, let me choose. There it is. Okay. Stand by. Okay, now you're seeing the add user or group pop up. Yep. So now 
In this case, let's say that my demo student is the user that needs extended time. Um, I select, whoops, I highlight the demo user. I click submit and I'll need to change this again. And see, this is one of those Zoom things, you know, we were talking about practice. Uh, yeah, okay. So now I'm back in my test availability exceptions. I've added demo user. I can give them multiple attempts. I can dial in, okay, they need time and a half. So there's 90 and I can turn auto submit on and off. I can also change the availability dates of the link uh, for this person. So that is what test availability exceptions uh, do for you. So, so when I click on that uh, auto, uh, you, uh, let's say add user, uh, user or group. Yes. Uh, so in that it will show me, when I click on that, it will show me the list of all the students in that, in my class, right? Yes. And yes. then I can add an exception for one of them. Yeah. Correct. Added or the as many as you need. For those of you yeah. who need to look at the Blackboard resource. <clears throat> oh, good. Thank you, Aaron. I added the link in the black in the chat for this Zoom room. Mm -hmm. If you want to look at that resource on Blackboard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And I will uh, I will send you my uh, email. Uh, you know, so that uh, like if you have a recording of this, I can access it. Okay. Okay. And under uh, due date, which I am curious as to why there's a due date for an exam, but you can set a due date for the thing. Um, the due date shows on that Blackboard calendar. Oh, it um, does. Okay. But. I'm not really sure who uses the Blackboard calendar. For those of you listening right. to this right now, the Blackboard calendar is not super great. And, um, and for that exams, that, that always kind of, that always kind of confounded me. I, it makes sense for assignments, but due dates. If, it, if it's on a, an asynchronous model, you would have to have a deadline for them to complete the test. They yeah. can do it whenever they're doing it. They have 30 minutes to do the test. When you right. have to have a due date in there, well, you wouldn't necessarily have a due date. You could uh, control that by having the link only display for a limited amount of time. Oh, okay. Okay. So typically the way I would do that was make it available for, you know, you pick a day and make it available for however many hours. Okay. And then within that time window, they would have the 60 minutes or 90 minutes to complete the test. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, the due date thing just always confused me with tests. Um, under self-assessment options, uh, you can include the test and grade center score calculations, which I assume you would do if you're giving an exam. Uh, be advised that if you hide the results for this test, we can't get them back. Is that correct, Aaron? If you do what? If we hide the results for this test. Mm -hmm. You that, cannot get, you don't, so that's for practice tests. Like if yeah. you were going to have like a syllabus quiz or something, you can't get it back. Like if you check that box and uncheck the box, it doesn't, right, doesn't so if, undo it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this uh, we're getting toward the end here. Don't worry, it's getting better. Uh, so show test oh, results. I'm sorry, can I ask a quick question just about before we move on the, sure. the scheduling of the test? Okay. And so, if uh, say you have a test that's sixty minutes, okay, and a student uh, logs in before the link expires, but say it's only ten minutes before the link expires, will they still have the full sixty minutes for the test? I believe well, that is. Yes. I, I believe that is correct. You'll get the full sixty if you hit it. You know, the yeah. minute before the link disappears. Yes, that's true. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the link, uh, link. How long do they? Uh, if link is live for how long? You specify that in uh, this box right here. Display after and display until. I see. Okay. And so that that just means that the link will just the test will exist, but the link will disappear. Yeah. Uh, and under, okay, so we talked about include in Grade Center. Now, uh, the question came up about what students will see at the end of the exam. So you can dial up, uh, okay, so here's after submission, I want the student to see the score per question. Uh, I want to see, you know, you can show them everything. You can show them the correct answer. You can show the answer they submitted. Uh, if you've entered feedback for each question, you can show it there, um, or you could just show the incorrect questions. Um, our colleagues in biology are, um, they don't show any of this stuff. I mean, when you submit the exam, that's it. You don't get any feedback until you <laughs> talk to the instructor. Uh, that would. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. 
what's all answers mean, right and wrong answers? Um, yeah, so it would show you all of the, uh, for instance, in a multiple choice question, it would show you all of the answers that were possible. Okay, okay, thank you. I guess, Rick, that has a lot to do with whether or not the items might get used another class or another semester. Sure. They only want the ones that they missed to show up. Right. And, and, and again, this is, I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead. So if you're doing randomized, what I'm, what I'm looking at is, you know, John and Jane took the same test. But for John, that was question two. For Jane, it was question six. And then the answers were also randomized. They really can't compare their answers and what they got right or wrong, right? Right. Yes. And more importantly, if they're sitting next to each other, they will get the question, you know, your question two might be my question seven or so on. Yeah. Um, so that's that's handy thing. But you don't have to you don't have to check any of these things. You could just um uh, Unclick all that and um, let your students see what they get once it's graded, just to see a grade, you know? By default, it keeps that score per question thing checked. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? If yeah, you don't want them to see anything stuff. except for their score, uncheck uncheck the that, yes. Okay, because uncheck score They'll still question. see their score, if they, but they won't see all the questions. If you have that checked, they will see all the question texts. And then if they took the test before somebody else, that person can still be looking up how to do what they need to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you had some that were multiple guests and then some that were uh, discussion questions that you haven't graded yet, what they would get was how they did on the, on the qualitative, on the quantitative questions, right? Yes. Very good. Yeah. And then uh, for this last one, test presentation, uh, you can choose to present just all the questions on screen at the same time, um, present the questions one at a time on the screen. Um, there's a prohibit backtracking button. And I, boy, that I would hate that if I was a student. Um, prevent changing the answer to a question that's already been submitted. Um, that's an option. Um, and then this last one, my all time favorite, randomize the questions. So when we set up the quest, when we set up the test question, we randomize the answers and here for the test, we're randomizing the questions. So, um, we have randomized that when we've made all these decisions. And after you do this a couple hundred times, it's, it's really simple. Um, you click submit. And now there's the biggest test of our life. So uh, I'm going to go back to student view and go back to my exams content area. And here's test two. So let's just take a look and see what this looks like. So here's the biggest test of our life. We get to choose the best answer. We have a time limit of an hour and 30 minutes. Remember I got extended time because I'm the demo student. Um, and we click begin to start. So here's our true false question. It is raining, uh, you know, let's go for that. I can't remember what I put on there. So we'll just uh, save on that and we'll advance to the next question. Choose the letter A and notice if you recall that when I created this question, the correct answer was in the first position and here it's in the second. That's not a great question. Don't judge me. Okay, so there's, uh, we'll save that. Can you read this? Uh, this is a, a yes, no. We'll move on. Hey, Rick, what happens if they don't click saved? Uh, it will save, I believe, automatically. Let's see what we do here. Um, so here is, here's an, was this the essay question? Mm -hmm. I, yes. I think it was. So notice there's a text entry box here. Um, What's the difference between short answer and essay? Ooh. Essay has more space. Okay, that makes sense. One's short and one's not as short. <laughs> um, you help me out with a little, <laughs> a little uh, more this, uh, there, <laughs> You only get uh, 16 characters for the short. Then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> one is short and one is, one is long. Not as short. <laughs> uh, okay, so the economy is, there's my answer for that. Notice how it's saved. And then for this last one, upload a file. 
So this was the file response question. So now I can just go <laughs> onto my computer. I can, um, here's a Word document that is the agenda for our exam. It uploads the document and um, there we go, that's been saved. And so now I'm ready to save and submit. I get a confirmation window, yes, uh, okay. And so the test has been saved and submitted, shows me how much time I used, I click the okay button. Rick, can you go over this last part that you just showed us, this uh, saving, uh, saving and uploading? Uh, sure. Um, just to go back to the question about short answer versus essay, essay doesn't seem to have a limit of any kind. Oh. Um, but in the short answer section, Blackboard says, short answer questions are similar to essay questions. Student responses aren't limited in length, oh. but the number of rows you set for the text box helps students know your expectations and the maximum number of rows for short answer is six. I see. Oh. And they're both graded manually. So maximum number of, so it's six rows, six lines. For the short answer, yes. For the short answer, I see. Uh, but and, and how many for the essay? Doesn't, unlimited. Um, unlimited. Unknown, un, let's say unknown. Unknown, yeah. Well, six, worse, six lines versus a buttload. Yes. Okay. All right, got it. That was on the website. I forgot to read that part. Ah. Got it. All right. Uh, and so now we've um, finished the exam as a student. And let's just jump over to teacher view really quickly here. And uh, let's look at our grade center. And let's, uh, there's four different views for grade center, but let's look at our tests. So here's demo user, there's test one. And test two, notice there is um, an exclamation point, which indicates that it needs grading. And I need to look at the attempt. And so here is our display here. So um, we missed, it's raining, whoops. Uh, multiple choice, I think we got that. Um, either or, we got that. There's the essay question. And now I can, as the instructor, assign a value for this. There's our given answer. And here's our file response question. So here's the submitted document. So let's click on that. And it will allow me to download this to either open it or save the file so that I can then, as the instructor, read it and assign a grade to it. Uh, Rick, is this where the uh, rubric would pop up if you had a rubric for the essay up there, at number four, I think it is, or three, yeah. number four? Uh, number four? I. You know, I'm not sure how a rubric appears. I think in, it'll have a button. Does it? Let's I see. Uh, I didn't. I didn't add a rubric for this thing, so I'm not sure where that would appear for that. It should. I mean, I think I'm thinking it would show up, kind of in line with the rest of that. Like, give an answer, response feedback, and maybe like a rubric button you can click on so that you can do the interactive rubric. Ah. Okay, apologies for not doing the rubric there. I mean, I'm, I don't, yeah. I feel like, the, like you said earlier, Rick, I'm not sure a rubric is useful in this situation because it's such a small thing and not like a lengthy paper. Ah. It would be more for an assignment in my mind, but it's personal preference. Okay, Rick, I have a question. I just looked at my Blackboard page uh, for my course and the exam, where do I find the exam? Uh, you know, uh, because it doesn't appear. Oh, on okay. Uh, you make that. You get to decide where that goes. So uh, let me uh, How do I make that? exit from the grade <laughs> center. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, I'm, let's just go back to the course homepage. <laughs> so um, this is uh, the course homepage is a content area as yes. are all of these links right here. So okay. content areas are where you add content to Blackboard. Uh, okay. I created a content area called exams, and I did that by going to this little plus sign up here at the top left of the course menu mm -hmm. and choosing content area. And when you choose that, you have to assign a name to it. Okay. 
and uh, you can decide at this point or later whether you, you want your students to be able to see it. So okay. that's how you add a content area. So, it, so you just named it exam? Yes. The content area? The exam. content area is called exams. And so okay. once I click in that, I'm taken to the exams content area. And right. when I'm ready to uh, add an exam, I go to assessments assessment. and I choose test. I see, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see. Okay. And then you repeat that process we just went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the plus plus sign to create uh, create a uh, yeah. the content area. And content area. you know, you have some design choices, of course, as the instructor. I I've, I've seen Blackboard courses that just put everything in the course homepage. Yeah. Um, so how you do that is really up to you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my kind of guiding principle when I was making my Blackboard courses was to try to make things as obvious as possible. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and so that completes the agenda we had set out for ourselves. Um, Today we've gone uh, a little little bit long. Um, I'm hi, Rick. To... Uh, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, early on, regarding the multiple choice type of questions, uh, mm -hmm. what's the difference between uh, single attempt and multiple attempts? Is that single? Uh, okay. Attempt? We only. That, can, can that is for the uh, that is for the exam setting. So uh, let me go back to the exams content area. Let's look at test number two. Okay. I'll click the little chevron. And I can edit the test options. Mm -hmm. So we'll edit the test options. And here are the, the choices we just made. Uh, and I'm trying to remember where multiple attempts do, do, do. It's above that. Is it? Oh, there it is. OK, mm -hmm. under test availability, I can make a test have multiple attempts. Uh, so you know, let's say you wanted to allow two attempts um, and score attempts using either the last graded one or the highest grade. You could do that as well. Oh. What, does that, what does that mean? What does the number yeah. of attempts mean in a multiple choice, uh, multiple choice problem? Uh, that, that, is, uh, that is not multiple choice. We're dealing with uh, attempts of taking the exam. Oh, they can take it twice. They can take the exam twice. Yes, oh. or however many times you'd like, or an unlimited number of times. So nice. not, not something I, typically did oh. but um that's an option yeah it's like a makeup test well some people give them a limited amount of times because they don't want to hear about it when their students um submitted the wrong thing or i, see. I mean they could have genuinely submitted the wrong thing mm -hmm. but that's just so they have another attempt over and over again to get it right and then you can just use the highest attempt the highest you know, hey rick on that would it deploy the very same uh exam or would it randomize and it get a different set of questions it would randomize according to the uh settings that you chose um you know down here about randomizing um question order and that sort of thing but they had a limit on the uh, you know if we had set a limit on the amount of time that they have to complete the Test. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, if they have multiple, multiple attempts, so what would that mean? You would uh, still get. Uh, so, it, in in this example, we've dialed it in to allow two attempts. I so see. they would still get sixty minutes per attempt. I see. I see. Unless you're the demo user, in which case uh, we dialed up uh, ninety minutes for the demo user. So. Um, so you know, for example, I do, I don't I do not want my students they see the their exam questions and answer key right away after they submit the test. Right. But I I will let them see maybe two days later or something like that. How do we set that up? Uh, you just set that up under show test results and feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just turn all this off. Uh, but I want. You can also you, use a second. Like, like two days later, how you could also say, oh, say you wanted to show everybody everything two days later, you could say, okay, on a specific date, okay. All right. uh, mm -hmm. let's just, you know, then you just pick a date. On the 30th, okay. I want everybody to see. Um, and if you really want to make sure you can have that first one say after submission, have nothing checked, and then there's a second option underneath that to do that specific date deal. That's like okay. a drop down. Oh. oh, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Eric. Okay. I have another an, uh, another question, Rick. How do I give the test back? 
Uh, so see, so like a part of my test is these short answer quantitative, you know, it's like quantitative problem solving, not uh, see, not multiple choice. So I will need to, you know, I have to grade that. Then how do I give that after I grade it? How do I give it back to the students? Uh, they will see. Uh, let's take a look here. Let me let me go through here and make. Uh, doop, doop, doop. Let's grade that. Um, okay, so let's grade this attempt. Uh, so my response feedback here for this um, essay question. Mm -hmm. um, I see, I see. So you can just type in some comments. I see, I see. Um, for that, and then assign a score. Then a score. I see, I see. Uh, and then for the final response, this one, you you would add your feedback as the instructor here in yeah, this yeah. text box. Okay. And how did you get to this screen? Can you show again? Uh, sure. You went to Grade Center. Grade Center. Yes, and I went uh, under Grade Center. Again, there's yeah. four different views, but I yeah. can limit the Grade Center to only show me tests. So that's yeah, what yeah. I chose there. So I've got um, the the test for the course, yeah. and then I go to the individual mm -hmm. attempt, mm -hmm. which is right here. Yeah. And then I'm taken to this page, and I can enter my see, instructor right. responses here. I see. I see. And scores. I see. So I can grade it directly in this, and that way they will be able to see the uh, graded test. Yes. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. And I typed here. Oh, wait. I didn't save what I typed. See, that's very important. So I need more is my response Good thing to, to this. remember um, for everyone watching, Rick, type. You have to click submit at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. That is it's not a real-time Google fancy in, thing. In every Blackboard window, you got to <laughs> click submit. Um, so that's an agenda. I'm going to give myself three points for that. Um, and so I've made all of my inputs, mm -hmm. and I will submit. I see, I see. And so let's go back to student view <clears throat> and take a look at, it's called my grades. And uh, from my experience, the students really love my grades because they can see how they're doing in the course. Um, so or here's test that or, or, or not. <laughs> and I didn't do too well on test two. Um, so if I want to see, I just clicked on the link for test two um, and I can, again, that, Anything that appears in blue is a link. I can see now I'm going through the responses uh, of the test. Well, that's all I got because that's all I allowed for it. Um, and I probably screwed something up in my uh, what to show to students yeah. option. So, okay, hold on. Let me go to teacher view. And let's go back to exams. And let's go back to test two. And let's edit the test options. And let's just check everything down there. So, uh, score per questions, all the answers, correct, submitted. Uh, and let's just put the feedback in there too. So, we'll say okay. Now we'll go to student view. Go back to my grades. Let's go down to test number two. And take a look here. There we go. And so now I'm seeing everything. Uh, so there's my answer. I missed that one. I did well on that one. I did well on question three. Uh, ooh, I only got a six out of 50, right? <clears throat> Not good. I need more though. My instructor tells me I need more. Uh, and there's my <laughs> feedback for that. Um, so what they see is dependent on how you, uh, set up the test response mm -hmm. as you deploy the test. Oh, and multiple choice. How, uh, how does, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, it, uh, it will, uh, it will grade it automatically and, and yes. say, uh, save it. So can you show us that part again? Sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, so in test uh, test number two, do you want to go through the setup, the creating of a multiple choice question or the 
the grading of it. The grading of it. Uh, okay, it, so. It grades it automatically? Yeah, as and you set the question up, you select the correct answer. So then Blackboard grades that for you. Oh, we were talking awesome. about the assignment during that part, my bad. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, How but to choose the correct I'm answer. Not, I'm not using the assignment. I want to use the. I know. I want to use the test, and but the test will have two parts. Uh, one part is multiple choice, sure. and the other part is short answers. Right, much like the test we just created. So, um, so I'm editing the test, and notice that you get an alert if you're editing a test that's all, already been taken. Um, so here are the questions that we have uh, we have added. Here's the multiple choice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the question is the silly question, but choose the letter A. And so the correct answer is A instead of seven, three, or P. Um, and that, as I set that up, uh, we could just edit the question again and show you what that's like. So here are our options. You choose how it's displayed, uh, either vertically or horizontally. I chose to randomize the answers. And as you select the number of answers and it will do something like isn't it like 99 answers or something like that aaron it's it's a huge number of potential answers uh but i i chose four um so you designate the correct answer so in this case the answer is a and that's the correct answer mm -hmm. and then um whatever answers for uh b c and d mm -hmm but you designate the correct answer. And then Blackboard is, is able to grade those, those questions. I see. So how do I indicate the right answer? By typing it in the- No, no, there's see a button right there that says correct. Yeah. Okay, right. let's make answer B correct. Now answer B is correct. It's not so right, you type in correct. the different answers into those- Yes, so I can type a, in- Answer B, mm -hmm. yeah. Clearly that's right, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so that's, that's how you designate which one is correct. Yeah, I see. And the plus is that Blackboard grades that. So that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so cool. always remember to submit. That's a very good point, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. Cause if you don't submit things, they don't get saved. Yeah. And I've learned that the hard way many times. Also, okay. if you indicate that, that, that there's a certain answer that's correct, and then you find out later from all of your 1 million students that you did that wrong, you can go back and change the answer on the test and then it'll regrade it for you. I see. So, okay, so, so now back to my uh, question. Uh, so my test has uh, two parts. Uh, you know, one part is multiple choice, the other sure. part is short answers. So the multiple choice, so when it, uh, when it uh, grades it, where will it where will i see the uh, the grades you will see the grades in your grade center but only for that part of the test well you uh keep in mind it, in our question in our exam that we created just right here we yes. have several different question types yes yes and so in your case you can create you can add as many multiple choice questions as you desire you can also add as many uh, essay or file response questions that all appear as part of the same exam. Yeah. Okay. And then they will appear, uh, the responses and the grades will appear in the grade center. I see. I see. Which is sort of like a spreadsheet, but not as good as Excel. So I see. I see. So the, uh, the grades, uh, so it will, uh, it, the grades will appear separately for the two types of, let's say I have just two types, uh, essay. Oh, wait, yeah. No. Well, it's part of the same exam. The grade for, um, let me scroll over here. I'm scrolling over to the right. Um, they combine in the same column. Right. So test number two, even though it's five different questions of different question types, yes. this is the grade for test number two. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so I guess- Just as I, though if you did that in class, you could do that on a piece of paper. Yes, yes, yes. So after I have graded it in the grade, using the grade center, then the combined grade for test two will appear as, yeah? Uh, yeah. It does the calculations for you. Yes, yes as yes, you- it shows as up you, there. Yeah, okay. Okay, very good. 
And again, uh, this is where I highly recommend a practice course um, mm -hmm. to so that you can go through and create the tests and then flip over to student view and take the tests so that you can see exactly how those things appear for your students. It's a I very see. handy way to uh, just see what both sides of that are like. I see, I see. So, uh, but in in our actual, uh, you know, uh, in our actual courses, we also have go to student view, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's right here. The right, the yeah, button yeah. is uh, right, and all Blackboard courses have that. Okay. So then, why do I need to? Why do uh, if we have courses already, why do we need to have a practice course? Well, it's just a good place for you to experiment with different. Um, I don't know, different tools, uh, perhaps different tests. There are no students in there. I know when I'm working in a, an I actual see. course, yeah, um, yeah. you can turn visibility on and off for students, but there are times that maybe I'm not 100% certain I've done that correctly. Mm -hmm. So that is the beauty of the practice course. Yeah, okay. Okay, then I would like a practice course as well. Uh, so. Excellent. If you want a practice course, please email CIT at ua.edu, and I'll make that for you. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, cool. I hope uh, we've covered some of the ground that we needed to cover today. Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Blackboard testing. Um, it it has, has worked really well for me over the years, and I hope it works well for you as we all engage in this, whatever we call this thing that we're doing right now, <laughs> this, uh, this new way of uh, engaging our students. But uh, I wish you all Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thanks, Arin. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.